Hi, this is David Bonnick Turtle. Welcome to video 7C, which is the third of four, devoted to the operational and integrated risk management topic in the 2012 FRM. And that means, because we're in sequence, that we've arrived at the Basel framework in the FRM. And it starts with the largest document, which is Basel II, the revised framework. That, that was accumulated and uh, issued in June of 2006. That Basel II document started before then, or was really first issued in 2004, which in turn was the accumulation of Basel II. So it's uh, Basel II, it's not as if there's a discrete event in time because even the implementation varies by country. So we've got Basel II and then 2.5, depending on how you look at it. And then of course, more recently, Basel III but where a particular country stands in terms of that phase in does tend to vary. But the FRM continues to anchor the Basel um, aims or uh, learning outcomes, starting with the Basel II. And so we can think about this as first familiarize with the principles of Basel II in order to understand the changes introduced in Basel III. And that's because... And that does make sense because Basel III doesn't wipe out or eliminate Basel II. It adds on to it mostly. Or I would, I would characterize Basel III as adding on to Basel II and then tightening some of the uh, regulations in Basel II. So this is much more of a supplement than a replacement. And so there's some natural order to this. And the Basel III of documents more recent, of course, uh, December 2010. Every year, candidates ask, do we have to know all the details in the Basel framework? And this document right here is, I think, 350 pages. So the answer is no. You it would take uh, an entire semester or a year to absorb all of the details in the framework. And and um, GARP won't test all of the details for one because. Um, it, the, uh, s some of these regulations continue to get revised. And so from a practical standpoint, it's safer for GARP to test at principles anyway. Some of the, at the principles level, uh, actually a lot of Basel II has not changed. Uh, so we'll take a look at the, we'll end with an emphasis on the principles in Basel II and then shift into Basel III. There are some associated learning spreadsheets as usual including an exercise on the determination of the capital adequacy ratio. Then the standardized credit risk charge. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a snapshot of that. That's really sort of less interesting, frankly, but I have it high because historically it's been more testable. Remember this column here. I, it's only in terms of exam relevance. So that's why I've got it high. Whereas opposed to 7C3, I have this tagged as low. And in fact, I've largely removed it from this presentation, the detailed discussion. If we go back a couple of years ago, I used to go for quite a few pages in diving deep on this IRB approach to credit risk because it's really a credit VAR. It's very interesting, especially quantitatively. However, it really, uh, a deep dive on that would really outpace what you need to know for the FRM. But if you are interested just for a practical standpoint, um, 7C3, that spreadsheet really does uh, contain, uh, you know, as, as sim sim simpl simply as possible, make that, make that IRB concrete. Then we've got treatment of collateral also low because the testability will be low. And then the uh, uh, operating, the two basic approaches to the operating risk, uh, medium, medium testability, because we have seen those tested before. And so we start with the Basel II framework and where we have the basic idea still really unchanged is three pillars. The first pillar is the minimum capital requirements. And in fact, when people refer to Basel, when there's technical discussion, most of the time they're implicitly referring to the first pillar because these are the rules that determine the regulatory capital. Recall that there's thematically been this distinction between, and oftentimes 